everybody. Welcome to Geekaholics Anonymous, episode 95. I'm your host, Rico, here with my co-host, Dane Cody. Dane Cody. How's Dane it going, man? Dane freaking Cody. No, it's just Dane Cody. How you doing? Uh, a little under the weather, but coming say. back from it. Yeah. yeah. You've, been, you've been sick quite a bit lately. Yeah, you know, it's weird. I, I don't usually get sick almost at all, and then... Uh, I got hit with it there late last year, which was nasty. Uh, yeah. What can I say? It's, I, I have a lot of uh, clients, places that I go to that there's a lot of sick people, unfortunately. So. That sucks. I'm in yep. lots of sick people's homes. Yeah. I usually sucks. hold my breath or stay For away from them and clean 20 my 20 or 30 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> and Yep. I'm really good at it. <laughs> I go in with like the freaking... Uh, biohazmat suit. suit on yeah yeah and they're like uh what excuse me and like it yeah, just don't worry about it <laughs> it's, this it's cool i get it's pretty cool. freaking paranoid with cleaning hands and stuff but yeah um, yeah it's, it's just a mix of a bunch of different sucks. stuff for me i've been tired i've been up so if i sound a little drained i apologize to everyone i've been up since like four in the morning um nice yeah rough baby was like not wanting to sleep and the dog was freaking sick so it was like a one two punch it was oh my god it was so annoying I was oh re- that's brutal i was ready to throw my dog out the window because <laughs> i'm trying to make trying to get the baby to sleep and then the fucking dog is like running around doing crazy shit and it's like what the fuck i'm trying oh. to get the goddamn baby to sleep you asshole and you're making all this noise i understand you're not feeling good and oh my god i was like literally about to blow a gasket last night so <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry if I sound a little defeated to anyone. Um, anyway, we will prevail. Welcome back, listeners. Welcome, new listeners. If you don't know, we get together once a week, talk about video games, TV, movies, or whatever the hell we like. Usually start the show with some what you've been playing, get into some news, public service announcements, and free-for-all. Um, and even before all of that, shiznat. We get into yeah. our we get into our designated drinking section because you can't be a geekaholic without being an alcoholic. What? That doesn't seem right. Nah, sure, sounds good. Okay, yeah, that works for me. Uh, t- today I'm actually I'm 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 just drinking some San Pellegrino water. I not feeling awesome, so I'm just trying to stay hydrated. A little sparkling water. Oh, nice. So we both. I know. We both suck because yep. I'm Today. only <laughs> I'm only drinking iced tea again. Yeah, it's what can I say? It's you know you uh, get. I wanted to drink some alcohol, but then I'm like, uh, I'm only going to have time for one. Then I will literally fall asleep on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm just trying to get rid of this nasty cold slash being sick thing that I got going on here. So, I'm trying to that's, that's what I'm drinking. Nice. Um, so, Dane. Yo, what's up? What you been playing, my friend? Uh, I've been playing a few things, actually. You got to play something I didn't get to play this weekend. Yeah, I, uh, I played the For Honor multiplayer beta over the weekend. I, uh, installed that and played a whole bunch of that on Saturday morning. On PC, I'm assuming. No, actually, I played it on my PS4 before my wife was awake and kicked me off so she could play Stardew Valley. I know. What the hell? So I know. I tried to play it. The last okay. time there was a beta, uh, I think there's been a couple, but I didn't take part in the last one. Yeah, there was a couple closed there, betas, and then they did another that's round right. of open beta, and then this was... This was the big multiplayer test, if you will, before yeah. the game came out. Because it, it came out this week, right? Yeah. So so the game is out now. You can you can play it. Um, the funny thing about that game is the multiplayer is fun. I, I really enjoy it. Uh, I, I, mean, we, I enjoyed got, it, too, when it worked in the last beta I took part in. was when That's when you were in Hawaii. Right. So you couldn't get in on this one? I it wouldn't run. I installed it on my PC, and oh, okay. it, it just kept crashing. Weird. So like I would play check the, beta drivers. I had the newest drivers, 
There's new <laughs> new drivers now after oh, okay. the release. But now I don't have it. I was kind of contemplating picking it up on PC because when right. it does run, it's easily, I can tell, 60 frames a second. It's silky smooth. Like, yeah. it runs awesomely. But for hmm. whatever reason, it was like pausing and like chopping up and then it would like crash. Hmm. And then I rebooted again and the same thing. I'd restart my machine, I'd try again and it would play for a little bit, then it would crash. And I'm just like, okay, it didn't do this last time. Yeah, that's all. Um Yeah. So like like I said, I played it on the PS4. I did um, download it on the PS4 to try and play it more on the PS4, but I I installed it and I never ever got around to playing it, unfortunately. Right. Because I also went through the fun task of replacing my PS4. Ah, we'll have to talk about that in the free-for-all <laughs> section. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I played that. I hadn't played it since PAX, uh, which was super early, which I really liked it. Uh, I felt that they'd added a bit, obviously, since PAX. Uh, we weren't really able to see or talk about any of the in-between stuff and the various things that we were noticing about gear and weapons and that kind of stuff uh, at PAX. Now, obviously, that's all implemented, and now that the game's out, I mean, we can yeah, talk they, about it. Yeah, they had some deal. of the other classes available in this, in this beta. Yeah, yeah, you could actually unlock pretty much all the classes if you wanted using the in-game points. Um Strangely enough, I didn't actually unlock any of the other classes, um, which was in hindsight kind of stupid, but whatever. Um, yeah, it that game was a lot of fun. I, I really enjoyed the multiplayer. I played a few different modes. Uh, there was one that I was playing that was, I think it was called Elimination, which was pretty much one team of four against another team of four, and then that's the idea is you eliminate the other team. Um, so there's no if, there's no capturing points in that one. That's just straight nope, up deathmatch. It's just straight up deathmatch. And the idea is there is that if you go down and a teammate comes over and revives you in in time, you can come back. So there is sort of the ability to you're not completely out down and out when you go down, but of course the enemy can also do that. So you get you kind of got to be careful about how you take it on. And when the map or when the match starts, you're pretty much teed off against one of the other players initially. So you have a fairly good duel off the bat, or if you're kind of smart, you try and run away and try and double team another guy and help one of your other players. Cause the idea is that if you can gang up, you're going to have a much better chance of yeah, surviving and winning. big advantage. What, yeah. uh, what class were you playing as? Just the Vanguard, which is the, like, the easy, the easy class. The, it's the starting class for each one of the, the three factions. Was that the so there's knight? the Viking, the Knight, and the Samurai. And you can play as this, it's the, how they kind of do it is it's the easiest one to play. Then the, usually the second one that you unlock is more of a defensive character. So the first, the first one that you can play for all three factions is sort of your all round guy. He's got some defense, but he's got some offense. He's kind of that well-rounded character, easier to play just to, to pick up and play. Mm -hmm. Then I know for the Viking, at least the second one that you can unlock is, a defensive character. They're a little bit slower. They hit really hard though, but they're more defensive. Uh, and then the third one you can unlock is the assassin class for all three of them. Mm -hmm. um, and that is obviously they're faster. They Glass don't have cannon. really as much. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's, if you're, they can work you so good though. If, if you come up against somebody that is good and knows what they're doing, they can really wreck you quick. Like, and that, to be honest, is the multiplayer in that game in a nutshell. More so than in a lot of games. That one, if you run up against somebody that actually really knows what they're doing, 
they can wreck you so fast <laughs> and and it's brutal and there's times when there is more than a few times where i wanted to throw my controller across my like oh <laughs> across my living room a because, lot of pre-reviews are ba- they compl- they compare this game to a fighting game then yeah like, in a lot of ways for sure you know there's a pretty good skill um oh absolutely like you can go in and you can kind of be a little bit of useful but unlike a fighting game where you can go in and button mash no button mashing and this is like deadly yeah like you're this, in trouble you have to be so quick and you have to be on it and you got to be very careful about when you block and when you attack. And if you're not attacking, you when need you to be counter. blocking. And then if you're not going to attack or you're not going to block, you need to be like trying to knock because there's a move that you can do where you will break the block. So if the char- if, if the other character is blocking and you're not really able to get an attack in, then you can hit uh, on the PlayStation 4. It is your square button and it will do a block break. And that will kind of not stun them necessarily, but it kind of throws them off balance for a second. And that usually allows you to get at least a quick attack in. Um, but man, if if you... Plus, there's also a dodge, so you can do a dodge roll. And at the same time, you have to think about your stamina, because everything that you do uses up your stamina bar. So you can rush in, and I had this happen to me a few times... You can rush in there, do real good, and then run out of stamina and get your ass handed yeah, to you because you can't. You're, you're super exposed and you can't defend exactly, yourself. Exactly. Exactly. So there is a real rock, paper, scissors with that game. Yeah, um, that's what a lot of people said uh, that I've but, read. And that's how I felt from when I played it. Um, oh, for sure. So I mean, when you and I were dueling one on one, it. It can go badly so quickly. You can think you're winning, and you're like, "Yeah, I got this," and then all of a sudden, no, 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 no. Yeah, <laughs> yeah very much so. Um, um, if if you guys so, yeah. aren't familiar, didn't listen to our podcast back after PAX, uh, or if you didn't take part in the beta yourself, you might know for yourself. Um, it, for honor is a third person knights versus vikings versus samurai basically multiplayer fighting game but how it works is it's not like your typical button mashing and holding down the block button uh per se you've got uh, your three stances so you've got your uh i guess your forward or your high stance and then your left and right yeah and depending what stance you're in if the enemy attacks you and you match the stance that they're using, you'll automatically block. Uh, yeah. And also, or you could counter and that's how you, that's how the combat works. Right. So depending on, and you can see the other person's stance. So you can see what's exposed and what's not, but, but you, you can know. only see it one when, when they go to attack. Mm-hmm. So and, it doesn't show it all the time. Yeah. So it's only when they're attacking it'll pop up, or you recognize so you have, it from the animation on yeah. the, the character itself. But or that like, too, you see their sword or their axe go from one side to another or to the top. So and it, um, yeah, it sets up this like Dane said, a very paper rock scissor esque um, fight between you and the the enemy and you can see that they're exposed but they can also obviously switch quickly switch over and counter block your attack because they see that you're going for their their open side and yeah and you have a quick attack which obviously doesn't do as much damage and then you have a heavy attack which is quite a bit slower and then there's combos within switching attack types and oh yeah you know like quick quick quick, it's surprisingly deep there's a bunch of counters there's special moves there's power-ups as you uh as you build up, is it a separate meter when you do the special moves or is it just energy? That builds yeah. Up? I can't remember that you have to successfully, how does this work? It's after a bunch of hits, right? Yeah. You have to successfully block a bunch and then attack or I, I can't remember, but yeah, you get an ability. Yeah. It's like a loadout of perks. There's different ones. There's yeah. You got to, the heal way that the you. game is set up now is that those are things that get unlocked. So yeah. initially you don't start off with any of those. Uh, and then as you play the game, you gain access to those as you level up and get uh renown. I think it was called. Mm-hmm. 
So there's like second wind, which like heals yeah. you. There's one that uh, inspires all your allies around them so that they do more damage. Um, yeah. If you're cat, which is handy for capturing some of the CPU uh, embattled points when you've got the so, AIs around you. So that's the other thing with this game. Uh, there is a few. I only played the multiplayer. Like I, just, I do want to point out there is a single player campaign in that game. Um, yeah. I have not been able to play it. I haven't heard. Which actually really sucks because that's the one thing that I'm super curious about because <sighs> I feel like if it had a really good single player mode. I've been scouring the internet and looking for that answer because I'm on the fence with this game. Like I re- Same. I really like what I'm, I've played, but I don't really want to play just a multiplayer game. No, um, me neither. Uh, I know it's weird, but I kind of, I want like a co-op campaign. And from what I can tell, it's a single player campaign. And honestly, no one is in any of the pre-reviews. I've been, I've been scouring the internet. No one has written more than a couple lines about the campaign. So wow. really, no one's really caring for it. It's not the, it's not the meat on the bones for this title. That's for sure. Uh, which yeah, is kind of disappointing. I was hoping to hear some pauses and say, Oh, this great campaign. It, but, like literally a couple of the reviews I said just else throw away single player campaign that basically teaches you how to play the different characters or classes really uh, intertwined with a story that's just like eh um so it's kind of like those original battlefield on the consoles were where it was there was technically a campaign but it was more or less, uh, well I, I guess I'm speculating at this point I haven't played the single player yeah, I, haven't I haven't played heard it anything either, about it but these are so. like this is from uh, Destructoid and Polygons uh, and IGN's pre-reviews, and literally anyone, no one really is even talking about it. And if they are, it's really just nothing, no great praise. They're not like, oh, and the awesome single-player campaign, which is what I was hoping, because then if I yeah. got that sentiment from people, then I would have been like, oh, um, yeah. I think I'm going to buy it. So I don't know. I'm probably going to pick it up when it goes on sale. I do like what I've played, but... Uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, it is fun. It's I I don't know what kind of staying power it would have if it, if it's predominantly multiplayer, and that's the meat and potatoes of that game. I don't it, it, know it how definitely long is. I would keep playing it. Is the only thing like I think it would for like knowing myself the way I know myself. I feel like yeah, like you said, if you had a buddy or a couple friends that were maybe well, playing it, you guys it. could uh, roll in a crew. That would be kind of fun for a while, but I don't know how long it would have for me to stay playing it week after week. Yeah, um, I played a, a bit of the... I don't remember what they call it, but it's it's Conquest, essentially. It's the Don't attack the control points. Whatever. Yeah, you hold the Yeah, it's points. attack and hold the control points. And then as you hold them, and there's sort of minions, I guess, if you will. There's, there's AI controlled. You guys have waves of enemies that come out from your base, and the enemy has wave of enemies. And the idea is, is to try and attack the enemies and move the lines forward. Um, and by attacking the minions, you also gain points and things like that as well. Um, and like, that was fun, but I don't know. Um, to me, I, I, I was actually surprised cause that was the meat and potatoes of what we played at PAX. We played a bunch of that and then a little bit of one-on-one stuff. Yeah, we played the dual mode. Yeah. And I actually ended up playing on the weekend. I think I played the most, 4v4 deathmatch elimination and only a little bit of the um domination or whatever you want to call it mode um and that was fun i i really enjoyed it but i just i don't know like i guess for me i wonder yeah i I just i don't know how much that would keep me coming back, I guess. Um, like I think the, I think the attacks and that system is super cool, and I really like it. I think it's really smart, and it wouldn't surprise me t- to see a system similar to that end up in other games, especially of this type. But when I was watching and and stuff initially, what I thought the single player was probably going to be was almost like a Dynasty Warriors type of game. 
And that actually excited me because that seems like it would be really fun because that's the thing with the Dynasty Warriors is you feel like a badass, but like, let's be honest, it's not really hard. You're just no, throwing you're just, thousands of guys butt, outside and it's just, yeah, and it's just whatever. Whereas this, the idea is, is that yes, the minions are kind of throwaway, but you've got a but, fighting but system. You've got, uh, yeah, you've actually got a it's, system it's in a place so that when you, depth. yeah, and when you come across a lieutenant or a captain or a general or something like that, you could have really good boss fights that are also adding that depth to the type of game that Dynasty Warriors is that's kind of missing from those games. And then add in with the upgrade system and stuff like that, that really kind of excited me. Um, so I'm really curious, like I said, I'm. I'm totally speculating and I don't know what that single player looks like yet. Uh, so I'm, I am really hoping that it's more like that still. Cause if it is, yeah, I'm down. No one's, that would be really no one's cool. Posted a review for this game. Nobody got apparently review copies until the day before release. So that's why there are really no reviews. So they right. might, they might be popping soon and we might have a better idea, but yeah. To, in, Check like back I said, next week. in the pre reviews, that no one really had anything to say about the campaign. Though I imagine yeah. not too many people have gotten too far in it. But usually when someone's played the campaign and they got something positive to say, they come out right away knowing that that's what people want to know, too, right? Uh, but yeah. the sentiment Hard is to he- say. heavy multiplayer, great combat, awesome fighting. Like, it is a cool game. I just, yep. you know, it's not necessarily, it's not speaking to me in that I have to run out and buy it today. But it's still, yeah, it's still a cool game, and I had a lot of fun with what I played. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely in a weird spot with games right now. Oh, there's where so I've many freaking cut. games. I was That's gonna, the thing. I, was I feel complain. like it's freaking November again, Oh, where there's okay. almost too many games now so, coming out. Because okay. we talked about this last week, but we missed... Like The podcast ended, and I realized how many games we freaking missed. Persona 5... Like. <laughs> In in the next yeah. month, oh. in the next month and a half, Persona Five, Mass Effect Andromeda, Zelda Breath of the Wild, Horizon Zero Dawn, uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands. There's five huge games right there. Yeah. That's and that's not everything coming out in the next nope. six weeks. That's nope, just not even. Neo just came out, which has been getting a lot of positive praise. Uh, that game is um, that game is slaying right now. I'm yeah. surprised you haven't picked it. Up. I I actually did end up ordering it. I was gonna say because that seems like it's right up your alley. Yeah, it is up my like alley. That, that I, I, Dark I, I didn't realize style game. I didn't realize it was out so soon, so I kind of just missed it. And then I was just you know humming and hawing, and then seeing how positive of reviews it's gotten. Um, that one really surprised me. I couldn't believe how good the reviews were for that yeah, game. Yeah, Team Ninja making a making a nice comeback yeah. title. It's done yeah. really well for them. It's performing yeah, I'm pretty seeing well. like eights and nines and reviews, and people are really giving it high praise. Yeah, so I did order it, but I don't know when I'm going to get it. I got it through Amazon because, as I've mentioned on the show before, if, you know, I don't know, Prime member. I don't know what your thoughts are about Amazon, but Amazon Prime. Just right off the bat, at least for Canadians. And I know they have the 20% discount in the U.S. too. But I think in the U.S., the Best Buy Gamers Club Unlocked is the way to go for buying games. I think it's an even better discount. Right. Depending on some like uh, gift card uh, bonuses as well as a discount when you pre-order. But anyway, for in Canada, Amazon.ca is 20% off if you're a Prime member. There's no comparison. It's like 63 wow. bucks versus 79 bucks. That's yeah, that's dope. I don't and I don't even pay for a lot more affordable. And I don't pay for Prime. My wife pays for it. So lucky, ching. Um, (laughs) yeah. So Frowner is cool. Just not yeah, not for not necessarily for us. Um, I got a nice little gift in the mail, uh, courtesy of Microsoft. Um, I uh, got Halo Wars Two sent to me. Um, speaking of which, um, I think the windows version might be live now. Uh, so by the time this podcast is released, the reviews will probably hit around the internet. I'm thinking my guess from the feeling I'm getting so far from playing this game, I'm thinking this is going to be like a solid eight title plus or minus around the, the net. 
Um, I feel like the first one was somewhere like that. Yeah. Uh, it's not groundbreaking. It's not like, I don't, it, it's, <sighs> I never played the first one. Uh, I never played Halo Wars one. It just, I don't know how and where and why I it missed it. It was a console it, only it. strategy it, game. That's probably part of it too, considering I play StarCraft 2 on PC and, you know, most civilization and most of my strategy games on PC would like, let's be honest, mouse and keyboard for those types of games are a huge advantage. Um, now what they've done with this game, they do have a pretty interesting control scheme with a controller that, that works. Um, I've played, I'm not very far, maybe close to halfway through the campaign. Okay. Maybe just under halfway. There's, I think there's 13, uh, chapters and I think I'm on like six or acts. I don't even know what the hell they're called, but anyway, um, I have to say this game has the best Halo universe cutscenes I've ever seen. Better than even Halo 5. I think they're done. Is it Blur? Is that the company? What's the name of the company that makes these? Uh, I don't know. uh, Cinematics are... Hold on. I'm trying to see what company makes them. They're very well known. Yeah, Blur. It's from Blur. They do a lot of the really cool video game cinematics uh, for lots of games, not just Halo. And um, like the intro and some of the in-between mission cutscenes are fantastic. Cool storytelling, awesome action, and they just look unreal. They look better than, like like I said, any Halo story cutscenes I've seen thus far in the Halo games. So for a strategy game, I was like, wow, that's really impressive. I, the story is pretty neat. I'm enjoying the story. I'm obviously treading lightly here because I don't want to spoil anything. The last game <laughs> ends on a cliffhanger. And uh, the setup for this one seems seems pretty interesting. Um, it's really neat. Um, it's obviously your top-down strategy game. You've got like a hero unit, which... Uh, on all the missions I've played so far have basically been Spartans, uh, okay, which have different enough. abilities. So there's a bunch of, you know, you've got one stick moves the camera. Another one moves like basic your, your selection icon or your mouse cursor. You want to say, um, and you can tab the tap the right bumper, select all the, uh, all your units on screen. You can double tap it, select all the units in the entire game. Uh, you can trigger will cycle you through the different unit types within the big group. Um, that sounds have, actually a lot like the first game's control scheme. You, I imagine it's identical. They might have added a couple things or made some things a little more uh, streamlined. But it works really well. Like I was kind of worried. I'm like, oh, I don't know. You could rotate the battlefield like 360 degrees. You can zoom in and out. It's all super fluid. It's really neat that each of the units also have like their special powers. Like your um, your soldiers have grenades that you hit the Y button, they'll throw grenades. Uh, your Spartan, depending on what Spartan you have, you may have uh, the Spartan laser or actually one of the, you know, the warthog type turrets. They're just holding yep. on to one of those turrets. Oh, and just yeah. Like, the um, minigun. The minigun. That's awesome. Um, it's, it's really neat. You have like, uh, you build a base um, that's got base and resource management. But is the in the first game the base that was the one thing that was interesting to me was the base building was there was predefined places yes. in the base yeah that you can think, so each uh, base was essentially pre-built for you at least laid out for you, you have the main one, base and then it has like uh depending i've seen up to six slots on the base that you okay, can so that, it's a similar idea that you can cus- one. that you can customize what types of building add-ons you have, like barracks or the machine, uh, the garage or the right. freaking power or the different types of uh, resource uh, units. 
You can add turrets to the base to defend it while you're not there. There's different types of turrets, uh, like a long range scanner and or just straight up turrets for enemies. Interesting. Okay, it's, so they kept that. It's that's that's really, cool. The campaign's really great. Like this storytelling and playing through the campaign because it's not just your. It's not like your multiplayer where you just hide in a corner, build your base, make a million units, run over to the other guy and kill them. There's like objectives. <laughs> There's, well, because uh, in this, your base can max out, right? You only have yeah, so only many have slots some, to exactly. put stuff. So, so it's up to you if you want to build a whole bunch of garages and try and do that way, or if you want to do. But it's kind of it's it's a finite amount of spaces that yeah, you have a, to build that stuff. Of ty- yeah, there's you can only build so many types, and it doesn't really make sense to build a hundred garages because you could just queue up cars from one garage. So you kind of want to do some diversity with the type of uh, oh, yeah, buildings no, you put on there. Because uh, I did it like I, an example, right? Like my first, the first, no, but you're right. Because the first time I played it, I built like a bunch of garages, thinking, "Oh, I could build cars faster." I'm like, "Well, that's kind of pointless." Because now I can't build, um, you know, my air units because I didn't build an air unit thing. So now I'm kind of screwed. <laughs> you could, uh, you remo- could demolish it. Yeah, you could demolish them one. and um, yeah, change that. But anyway, this is interesting. It, it sounds like they've kept all the good stuff from the first game. Then so it's cool objective based levels while telling a story um the really neat thing is the hero units like um the spartans you can actually they have uh the spartan slam and they can actually uh jack vehicles just like in the first person halo games oh heck yeah. so you can actually com- commandeer like uh the, the covenant tanks or the 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 brute cycles and the ghosts and so forth all the different vehicles Sweet. Even though it's like a strategy game, it's just got the same. That's really cool because you can really power up your group when you jack a freaking tank from the enemy. And now you have a unit that you technically shouldn't have. Right. It's, but you uh, can totally use it to your advantage yeah, then. No, absolutely. It's it's a, it's a good game. I really like it. From what I played, I'm like super surprised. Um, I've never played it before. I honestly went in. I'm not, surprised you didn't play the first one. No, I, I don't I know just, how you missed it. I just missed it. And it's, but to be to be fair, like I, I kind of understand in a way because I remember playing it. I, I'm trying to remember if I actually own it or if it was at a time it was early enough in the Xbox 360 life cycle that I may have actually rented it. But I played a bunch of the first one. And I was impressed with, like you said, how good it was for a console strategy game. But because it was built specifically and only for the console, I think I also felt that it was limited in certain ways. Yeah, it's... um, I don't know. um, It's Creative Assembly, isn't it? I think. I believe that's the one that did this one. Yeah. Because it was Ensemble Studios that did the first one. But they have since been gone the way of the dodo, I believe. I want to look. I don't believe they're around anymore after the last... Yeah, uh, 343 and Creative Assembly, which is the... Those are the Age of Empires guys, aren't they? Or am I thinking something else? Oh, I don't know. No, they're the War Rome Total War games. I think. You're thinking of because it no it is creative assembly total war okay. Rome, yeah 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 it's that's who I'm thinking of ensemble is the ones that did Age of Empires, yeah ensemble is the the one that did Age of Empires Age of Mythology and then the original Halo Wars before they were shut down yeah after Halo Wars, hmm it's really interesting if you read yeah. um, some of the history behind Halo Wars, it's a weird game where apparently Microsoft didn't want to make the game. But the studio was making it, and it there was some really. If, it's really interesting if you go research it. That that the fact that that game actually got released to begin with is kind of amazing. It had a pretty, uh, pretty. It big, had a fairly strong following. Yeah, it had a pretty good fan base. It really liked the first Halo Wars. I really yeah. like this game. I'm really liking this game. I will probably most likely beat it. Um, that's. You know, for me to beat a strategy game, that's saying a lot. Uh, it's really well done. It's super polished. It it plays it, it, it plays well, and I, I still haven't beat I, the campaign for StarCraft Two. <laughs> yeah, I haven't beat the third. <laughs> well, I don't own the third campaign. 
but okay, fair enough. It's uh, surprisingly good, and I'm wanna. I think it's gone live on Windows 10, which is I'm gonna download it on PC and see what it's like on that. I it could only go up from there, but if you don't have a Windows 10 PC, it's pretty. It's a pretty cool Halo uh, experience, that's for sure. I'm very surprised uh, of the quality of the storytelling in this type of game. And like I said, the cutscenes are amazing in this game. They're unreal. It sounds they're, like it. They're like Blizzard esque. Well, I mean, there's some if of those. Not even better. There's, I think, the opening cutscene is online that you can watch. You and probably, I remember watching it. You can, and I went, "Wow, that looks awesome." Yeah, I don't know if that's the actual opening from the game. I'd have to look. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I just remember seeing something for Halo Wars, and I went, "Wow, that looks really crazy." So I don't obviously I've been tiptoeing about very precise details, but you know, they don't want to spoil that. It's just, and they ask us not to, so. <laughs> Fair but enough. it's pretty cool. If you like the first one, I imagine you would like this one as well. Uh, it sounds like that it. being said, I, I haven't played the first one, um, but yeah, it's pretty cool. I I'm I'm liking it. It's it's a good game. Sweet. I mean, everything that you were describing sounds an awful lot like the stuff that I liked about the first one. So. I played. Uh, I also played some Dead Rising Four some more, and then I was like, "What the f- hell am I doing?" Like, I like that game, and I hate that game. Do you like that game as a game that you're killing zombies, but you hate it as a Dead Rising game, or is it the other way around? I tell. I you just, like it as a Dead Rising game, feel, but you don't really like it as like a I'm zombie a, killing game. I feel game. like I'm obliged to play it. Like Why? I don't know, because I started it, I have to finish it, <laughs> and but then I'm kind of having fun, and I'm kind of not having fun, because the controls are kind of... I don't... I gotta go back and play the other two because I swear to God, I don't oh, remember. Oh, I hear that's a bad idea, dude. I, I don't <laughs> remember the last one playing so janky. And I feel. From, from other people that have gone back and played the first two, at least, uh, apparently they don't hold up super well to age. At least just Dead Rising uh, 3, I want to play. Yeah. Oh, fair enough. So, I don't know. I was looking at that, and then I was like, what the hell am I doing with my life? I've got so many other games to play. And I'm like, yeah. I'm running out of time here before, like, next week, the Final Fantasy 15 patch drops. Neo's probably going to show up on my doorstep any day. And then it's Horizon and fucking Zelda within days of each other. Yeah, I know. And then I'm just, I... then I'm fucked. I know. Persona <laughs> 5 and Horizon and Zelda and the Switch and so Wildlands and <laughs> you um, in a good way. You played some Double Dragon 4. I did. Uh the they full disclosure, uh it was provided to me by uh, the PR guys. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, so I did not purchase it. Um, I unfortunately... Uh, where do I go? Um, <laughs> it's... Oh, yeah, they set stream. Yeah, they sent... I got the email here, but I, I see that. It's... it's uh, Okay, so instead of doing... Oh man, I don't even know how to get into this. Like Arc System um, Works making a throwback style Double Dragon Four as if it was a sequel to like the old school arcade games or Nintendo games. Yeah, I played Double Dragon One and Two with my cousin a ton when I was growing up. NES, on the, right? On, absolutely on the NES. Um, they were great games at the time. What did you play f- it on? I played this on the PlayStation Four. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I, to be fair, I don't really think it would change depending no, on what I was it playing it on. I, I, it's, I just it, was wondering, it's not a hard, it's not a hard game to run. Oh, it's only on PlayStation 4 and Steam. Yeah, sorry. Um, it's, it's all the things that I, how do I say this without sounding really mean? It's all <laughs> the things that I didn't want them to bring forward from Double Dragon that they <laughs> seem to have kept. Um, so the story, which is ridiculous, 
as a double dragon game is you're the brothers you're driving across the u.s to a dojo in san francisco and you get pulled off the road and of course you start fighting dudes because of course you do because it's a double dragon game um they've increased the move set a bit there's some new moves roundhouse kicks and you do this weird if you're on the ground you can do a combination where you jump up and forward while spinning which can allow you to the one of the things that i found kind of annoying and frustrating and again maybe <laughs> to be fair maybe it's one of those things that i just haven't played a game like that in a very very long time um but i don't remember happening to me but the bad guys they knock you down and you're on the ground and then they walk over to you and they just stand there punching and kicking. And as soon as you stand up again, you you don't even, you can't move, you can't do anything before they punch you or kick you and you're back on the ground again. You just can't get comboed to death. Yeah, yeah, which is kind of annoying and, and can be really frustrating. So I think that move, the, the flying thing, is to help negate that a little bit. Uh, which, to be honest, I was never really sure how to make that happen every single time that I wanted it to happen. It seemed like sometimes it would happen and then other times it wouldn't happen. So that either means that I suck at video games or they Yeah, you suck at control, video games. We already know this. Which don't, don't, I know, don't, I know. Don't pretend um, like you don't. The, con- the controls were not great. Uh, the jumping is terrible. It's that... I mean, it is... If you play... If you have recently played the original Double Dragon on Nintendo and you said, I wish that they would make something almost exactly like this in every single way, then this game is for you. If you were like me and you have this great nostalgia about those games, but you were hoping that they were going to make it more fluid and they were going to make similar to what they did with Strider, I guess. Um, where it's that side scrolling, it's more of a beat 'em up. But they've taken various things from now and they've implemented it into the game to make it cuz let's be honest, the back then we were technologically held back big time and I think that that's yeah, part of why certain games ran and played the way that they did. Um the the thing with this is there's platforming sections in this game that are real bad. I mean, <laughs> real, real bad. bad. Yeah. Um, cause for one, the way your character jumps is terrible. Um, the other thing that I ran into was the AI in the game is also terrible. Um, more, on more than one occasion, I was supposed to jump to an upper platform that had a, bad guy standing directly on the edge of it waiting for me to get up there and of course as soon as i jumped to get there and even if i was trying to do a roundhouse or something it would just he would hit me and i would either fall to my death or (laughs) fall backwards back down onto my platform um and that definitely happened more than i care to admit um there was some levels where they've got these um, conveyor belts so you're trying to move forward against the conveyor belt and there's bad guys showing up and yeah um, yeah I, again um, maybe I don't know maybe I I just forget what those games were like and this is exactly that but one I don't really remember there being terrible platforming parts in Double Dragon I can't remember. But, I think uh, there was a couple rough jumps that you had to do in the old ones, but yeah, I feel I, like there was too. I, I've heard the same sentiment from other people around the internet that yeah, it, they were just like, yeah, this game's. They were just straight up. They were savage. They're like, yeah, this game's just bad. <laughs> um, I guess you really. I mean, have there, to there be like a hardcore a double like dragon could... fan, like you said. You want the exact game that you played back then? Then you might yeah. not, you might not be disappointed, but. You know, it's cool that they did it graphically in the vein of the old one, but you think they'd like, you know, maybe tighten up the combat some more and the platforming so that it played more modern, though it 
retain. that's that's kind of what I mean, right? Like I was really hoping for that, um, but what I got was not that at all. Um, and also, like strangely enough, I don't. And again, maybe this is. Maybe I'm just bad at video games. I don't know. Yeah, uh, I found that, we know that more often than we not. We went over this already. There was there was a f- like several times where I would be I would run up towards a guy and I would be punching, but it was just outside of the range, or I'd kick and the guy would be just outside of that range. But of course, because you stop moving as soon as you do the attack, I would run up and it was like I was punching but i was hitting like inches away from the guy's face but i couldn't just lean into it that tiny bit more to actually reach him and then of course he would just step forward and kick me or or roundhouse punch me or just it was bad um yeah no it's unfortunate um i i really appreciate uh the access to the game but unfortunately i you know like i said maybe this is it's just not made for me. I, I maybe I had hopes that it was going to be a newer, sleeker, like I said, uh, an updated take on it. Maybe keep the same graphics, similar to what we've done with Castlevania games. You know, they've they've managed to come from the original NES game. We've got great iterations of said games, even till now. Um, they're all quite a few of them at least the side scrolling ones that came out on the ds and the 3ds and stuff they're very similar to the older games even the original couple but they've iterated and they've and they've made changes and modernized themselves in the right ways and unfortunately this just feels like they did not Mm -hmm. Um, and I feel like it's a huge missed opportunity because I mean, a lot of people, myself included, have super fond memories of those double dragon games. I mean, I, I played tons of them back in the day and I'd love to play another game like that. Um, and unfortunately this is just not it. Yeah. It's banking on that nostalgia doesn't always work out. Yeah. And I mean, I, to be fair, I do understand it is not a full price. It's not a $30 game. It is, I believe it's. $7.99, Seven ninety nine, I think, on the store. Nine fifty. On the is that on the Canadian one? Yeah, I just checked. So. Okay, so yeah, so seven ninety nine on the American store, essentially ten bucks on the Canadian store. So, so yeah, that's kind of my my take on the Double Dragon Four. Nice. Yeah, you also played uh, a couple other things. Yeah. Um. So, if you're a long time listener on the podcast, you've talked about them before. I have. Um, Near the beginning of our podcasting, we got into discussions about Castlevania games and what had happened and everything else. Um, Long story short, we talked about Castlevania Lord of Shadows, or Lords of Shadow, sorry, and neither one of us had played it. We kind of heard things about it. We didn't really know if it was good or bad things. But we'd heard some things, um, and I decided that I thought I it was in my collection from Steam, which turns out it was. And I was like, "Screw this! I'm going to install it, and I'm going to find out." So I actually ended up. So I've been playing this over the course of a while, thirty years. It's not that long. <laughs> it's been a solid six or eight months because that's just sometimes the way I play games. Um. And I finished it um, over the course of the last few days here um, and actually started the second one because uh, I own that one too. So I, ha- um, I own the first one. I don't think I own the second one. That game's great. That's a really good game. It's, it is like a, it's a, they, it's the, they went to a 3d game it's got little bits of the. F- We're going to talk about the first one because that's the one I just recently completed. Yeah. Um, it's got a little dash of Shadow of the Colossus a couple of times where there's these monstrous bosses that you fight where you're climbing them and they're like a 15 minute boss battle, which is super cool. There's one fairly early on in the first quarter of the game i would say and there's another one 
There's a couple of them, uh, and there's another one towards the end. Uh, some of the bosses in that game were just fun and cool. The combat I really liked. Uh, the blocking and the uh, the dodge system in that game works really well. It's super fluid, and when you get a rhythm going, y- you feel like a total badass. Um, there's also a system in the game where when you do well and you don't get hit, you're essentially creating combos, and that builds a meter. And once that meter gets full, you release essentially magical shards, and you can use those magical shards to power either your chaos gauntlets or your oh what is it called now oh it's essentially light and dark magic and you can use the light magic to when you turn that ability on when you attack using light magic it will actually heal yourself and then when you attack with the other magic you're doing quite a bit more damage so there's this whole trade-off where you need to use your regular attacks to build the bar to get enough of these magical orbs coming off the guys. And then you need to, if you're getting hurt, you need to switch over to your light magic and do a bunch of damage to heal yourself. And then you got to switch back over to your chaos magic to try and like put the hurt down on the bad guys. And it's this real dance that you do, especially in boss battles, that I really like. Um, I thought that it was really well done. And like I said, between the blocks and the way that you can, you have kind of a dash. So you're constantly deking out of the way, mixed with blocking, mixed with trying to attack enemies. And the whip that you have is, yeah, it's really good. I really enjoyed the combat in it. It's, it's, it's like a kind of a strange cross between God of War shadow of the colossus and i don't know there's like a a little bit of an adventure game sort of all thrown into one yeah the first one Um, was definitely well received back in the day it it's a great game i was really impressed it's fairly lengthy Uh, i think it took me a little over 20 hours to beat um and i to be fair like that was definitely not scrounging every single corner of every single level so each level has multiple scrolls, and that's the other thing, is that as you play through the game, you find um, crystals. Some of the crystals will increase your light magic, some of the crystals will increase your dark magic, and some of the crystals will increase your life. Um, and of course, you need five crystals in every each one of those in order to make that happen. So you're trying to run around the level and find these fallen soldiers, usually, who are have these crystals on them um and it's cool it's there's a there's an interesting story that i actually thought was surprisingly deep um i think what's neat about the lords of shadow games is that it's actually and i didn't really realize how these fit into the castlevania games this is telling the story of i mean huge spoiler but to be honest the game came out and 2010 or yeah, something like that ago. so <laughs> you know if you haven't played yet then that's kind of on you but uh it's essentially telling you the history of dracula mm-hmm. and it's telling you like how he ended up becoming dracula and how and because of course trevor and alucard and all of those games that have come after you're always that guy that's coming in to destroy Dracula and destroy the castle, or you're trying to destroy Alucard, or there's all of that stuff that's going on. And this game is actually showing you like how that came about, how that, how the Belmonts essentially became that fated bloodline, if you will, and why they're in this centuries old battle of fighting the bad shit. (laughs) Um, And it's cool. And, yeah, it is, and it's got a great ending. Um, if you stick around till after the credits, there's a really cool uh, cutscene. Which the only my I think my only real complaint with this game is that the game ends. There's the credits and everything else, and then there's this really cool cutscene. But there isn't any real explanation as to how you get from the end of the game to the cutscene. 
Um, that's the only real thing that I would kind of has a complaint. Now I understand that they did release a couple DLC packs for that first game, which I believe I may have as part of the ultimate edition. I'm not sure. Um, once I finished the first, like the actual game and I saw the credits roll, I started, I installed the second game. Um, so that may explain a bit more of the in between, because essentially the second game starts several hundred years in the future compared to the original Lords of Shadow game. Um, but yeah, no, that, that first game was really good. Uh, I was, I was actually surprised that it took me as long as it did to play that. I, I feel like if you're a Castlevania fan and you're missing that game, I, I think you're doing yourself a big disservice. Yeah, uh, it's been on, it's a, it's been it's on my pile game. of shame for a long time. And that's, I'm in the same boat, right? Like, like we've said before, there's a shitload of games that come out and you can't play them all, all the time. You, you, some are going to fall through the cracks. Um, I'm actually, I'm really glad I finished it. It's got a unique story. The way that the story is told is 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 cool there's some neat cut scenes but there's also you're picking up scrolls that fallen soldiers have left or like you know i'm writing you this because and some of them are telling you about the bad shit that's happening or is gonna happen around you so hey i this thing caught me and now i'm being poisoned to death you know and it's kind of like that little bit of oh that that's okay i gotta look out for that that's a bad attack or oh, they seem to be, um, you know, fire seems to hurt them or something like that. It was It's just kind of cool. And I like that. It was a neat way to sort of tell a story. Um, and then in between chapters, there's also a voiceover that's really well done. And it sort of tells the story of somebody who's following the main character, sort of watching him and what's going on and sort of telling it from his perspective. And that was really cool. It has an, a good twist kind of at the end that I honestly didn't really see coming at all. Um, yeah, I mean, you end the game in an epic battle with Satan, so that's kind of a thing <laughs> uh, <laughs> that I totally did not anticipate happening. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's a, again, the, the end is a little bit muddled because you die, but then you end up coming back and you fight Satan and then he goes back to hell and then you're essentially looks like you walk off into the sunset but then at the end of the game like the end end after the credits roll it turns out that you're now Dracula in modern day and I went what? Yeah I heard, how did, I heard that how did that happen? I heard the ending um, was kind of fuckery yeah, it kind of messes with your mind. They so since I st- and that's part of why I started the second one because I realized that the second one You're like, is need- more or less. <laughs> it literally starts exactly where the first game You're ends. Like, I need to know what's going on here. Yeah. Um. So essentially, it turns out that because you're more or less God's chosen one, if you will, and you take on all the bad shit in the first game that he doesn't want you to die. So he essentially makes you immortal Aww. and you become kind of like a vampire badass, uh, which of course then makes you angry and that's a whole nother thing. But yeah, needless to say, then you become the thing you hate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. And you're not a nice guy. Uh, that's the other thing I got to admit. Um, these games, they are not, they don't hold back at all they are if they were movies they would be a hard r um you know nudity violence you're ripping people's throats out you're sliding your hand through and ripping hearts out you're it's i mean you're not a nice dude i mean to be fair you are dracula i guess but um they definitely do not hold back at all it is it is like i said it is a hard r it is very much a r-rated game um it, and dark, yeah, I, obviously. Like I said, I started I mean, the first one, and I really liked uh, how, what I had played. Uh, yeah. And I just, I don't know, I never got back to it. And it's on my stupid yeah. 360, which, of course, um, it's not, don't even it's have not, it's up not now. connected right now. Yeah. Um, so it's interesting. Uh, I'm 
so I've, I've started Lord of Shadows 2. I'm about a little under halfway, I think. From what I can tell, I think the second game is shorter. It looks better. Um, both, I think, look... Uh, they're, if you're playing it on PC, Lords of Shadows 2 has a HD texture pack that you can turn on in the menu, which is really nice because that definitely tightens things up. You can crank... I mean, I can crank everything up and it runs at a great... I've just got it locked at 60, but... Um, the frame rate never drops. It's just rocking at 60, which is great. Um, there's a lot more interacting story and cutscenes in the second game. The first game, it feels like you're being told about a, some stuff in between the, the chapters, but ultimately, like during the chapters, it felt a lot more like you were off doing your thing and there was obviously some some cutscenes here and there sprinkled throughout during the main story stuff whereas the second one is definitely a bit more heavy-handed with that type of story things um not that that's a bad thing it's just something i kind of noticed um i feel like they're definitely kind of feeding a bit more of a story here than than that um some of the character, I mean, you're it, they they did a good job of sort of explaining why you have to go back and get all of your powers again, because of course at the end of the first game you're a total badass who defeats freaking Satan for crying out loud. You're pretty much the badass of all the badasses, um, and so of course at, even at the beginning of the second game there's a bit of a prologue where you are still a complete badass and you have all of your powers and everything at max and it's a pretty cool scene and I won't spoil it in case anybody is actually going to play it but um and then of course they kind of explain why you that's not you when you wake up 400 years in the, or 500 years or whatever is in the future um and it actually is interesting because it actually ties heavily in with the other games that were happening on the DS, um, Mirror of Fate, and some of the other games that you were playing, like I said, on the on the DSs and things like that, with other characters like Alucard and Trevor and all of those games. And I thought that was really cool because it actually fit and it actually explained from a different angle of what was going on b- sort of behind the scenes and why it's all kind of super fucked up. Um, and it was cool. I liked that a lot. I, really, I thought it was I really, really well done. I like those old Castlevania games on the DS. <laughs> yeah, those are solid games, I'm, man. I'm, uh, they I'm talk about those. Simon, and uh, Simon's the guy from... Was he the one in Symphony of the Night? Or was he only in two? Right, he which plays was Alucard in Symphony of the Night. Oh, Simon's okay. definitely in Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest. Yes. So, yeah. So, they like there's a huge explanation of like who Simon is and that whole thing in this game. Uh, essentially at the beginning of the second game, they go into pretty much the entire lineage of who Simon is and who he thinks he defeats Dracula, but then this happens and then Trevor and then what happens with Trevor and how Alucard comes to be. And then, you know, it's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, so it's, I'm liking it so far. It's the one thing it doesn't feel as tight as the first game. Um, some of the level design is a little bit more murky and I think there's a bit of challenge with modern day. Like, cause that's the thing is that you're playing as Dracula, but you're playing in the modern day, which is kind of weird in some time. Like there's, there's flashbacks and there's some weird sort of mysticism, if you will, going on where you end up back in old style castles and things where you're fighting very similar to the first game. But there's also several maps and missions and things that you're doing where you're infiltrating like a pharmaceutical company, for example, which seems 
weird kind of weird <laughs> yeah it just seems a little bit weird um and the map design just doesn't feel quite as as focused and as tight as in that first game yeah um there's the first game there is definitely a lot more puzzles uh like there was definitely quite a few times where either it almost felt like some of the levels and the way that some of the levels are designed almost feel like a giant dungeon where you're kind of like in the Zelda dungeons where you've got all of these moving parts. That's closer to the Castlevania games in general. Oh, totally. Navigating Um, the castle and you need the certain ability or item to get past this part or at least in this, at least in the DS games and the like symphony of the night. Right. Oh yeah, um, and the and that game is definitely like that. There's stuff that you see and you're like, shit, I can't get that yet. I must need an ability or something. I'll have to come back here later. So this this um, one, the second one's a little more linear, you'd say. Um, yeah. There's, and it's weird because on certain things, they're strangely heavy-handed about showing you this thing and then the camera pans is clearly connected to this other thing over here. And then other times you'll walk into a room and it's just like, okay, what am I supposed to do now? Like, you know what I mean? Like, it seems like there's this weird where it's like some stuff. They're just like, okay, we need to tell him what's going on. And then other times they're clearly not telling you what's going on. And you're, and it's this, it's a little bit strange, because you either want them to do it, I don't know. It, it just yeah, feels like a weird all disconnect there. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I'm, but yeah, I'm sure you will beat it and keep us posted on how things go. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, cool. uh, I, I'm I, actually I want... sad that Mercury Stream never got a chance to make a third yeah, one. Yeah, they, they really were good. talking about making a third one, and then Konami ixnayed that. But you know, everyone loves yeah. Konami and all the decisions they've made lately. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I'm going to say that's about it for what you've been playing. Actually, have you been playing any Fire Emblem Heroes still, or did you drop that? Oh, no. I'm still playing. Okay. I don't really want to talk about it too much, but I've been free. Have you uh, picked up a five-star hero yet? No. You texted me that you got <laughs> some five-star heroes. You've got at least I... two, don't you? I have done two full uh, twenty orb pulls. So we we talked about this either last week or the week yeah, before. Yeah, we te- you were texting. You were rubbing it in. Yeah, um, you can do a five. Um, we talked about character. We talked pull. about this when yeah. the game initially came out. You use um, orbs to summon characters, and exactly. you get a discount when you do a mass summon as opposed to a piecemeal. Yeah. Um, so I've, so my first, the first character I summoned, the first one was a five star Roy. I have Roy. I have a four star. Um, so then, so then out of that batch that was, I got one five star, a couple of four star, or I think a couple of four yeah, stars probably and a one three four star. stars. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then my second pull I got a five star Marth. Nice. Marth's good. He is good. Um and then I also got a four star Camila. Oh, that's good. She's pretty good. She's very good. She's um, she's definitely like top tier for the axe wielding uh characters. Yes, she definitely is. Um one thing I gotta say about that game is that the five star heroes especially Oh, they're far superior than the other ones. It it almost feels broken. Oh yeah, it's that's how <laughs> good they are. Like I I was kind of surprised because of course I had other characters that were level higher and so I was using my 5 star. I was trying to level them up a bit to get them to a point where I could use them. Um and like honestly, it I have like a you know the, I I don't play a ton so I don't they're not super high level or anything but my five star characters can pretty much if 
if they're attacking against a color that they're strong against, they'll one hit them. <laughs> nice. And that's at like the sa- at a similar level or lower. I wouldn't know what that's like because I don't have any five stars. Um, my four so stars I'm, are pretty powerful, but I've gotten to a point yeah. where I need to grind right now. Oh, really? Yeah. So interesting. <laughs> freaking, you've got five stars. My brother-in-law's got five stars, <laughs> and it, so I got pissed off. And remember that time I was re-rolling for a female Pokemon? Yep. I'm re-rolling my fucking Fire Emblem game. I figured I'm not far enough in that I've just deleted it, and I'm re-rolling. Because you essentially get enough orbs when you so, first launch the game to do a four character pull, and it doesn't. It takes a few minutes. So, the guy at my work, <laughs> one of one of the guys at work, he he has beat the game. Uh, yeah, you he beat it the that. first weekend he, it came out. He re rolled. I'm trying to. I don't remember. I'm pretty how sure. many times exactly he said, but he had it open on his phone and his iPad. Oh, he was doing and it on he, both. And he was dual. So he would create an account. Then he would do the characters. And if he didn't get what he wanted, then he would delete it and he would do it again yeah. on his iPad. And he was doing this back and forth till he got a pull initial pull that he w- thought was strong but he said he spent about an hour and a half doing it. Um, so he... I've spent more than an hour and a half, but that's probably because I'm just half acidly doing it, and I forget that yeah. I'm, do- I'm just doing it off to the side. I'm not doing it right now at all. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. So he said, like, and then he finally got a really good pull and got the characters that he wanted, yeah, and he, then he played, he and he prob- beat the game. He probably wants Takumi, is what every, who, who everyone wants. Yeah, I don't know. I was just surprised. I was like, whoa, dude, uh, it seems kind of excessive, but all right, whatever. I didn't get I'm any five stars, it. and I got to a point where it's like I need to grind to pass the campaign levels because I don't have the right unit combinations or strong enough versions. So oh, I'm like, I see. Oh, I'm like, I don't have any five stars. Like, this is kind of li- It's like I kind of hit a wall that I've just gotten bad pulls. So I said, right. screw it. And so now I'm just... I'm rolling until I get a couple five stars. What, I've actually gotten what? two five stars on a pull so far. Wow. Actually, I got the two five stars that were added in the most recent update. Right. Uh, but Which was like, yesterday? Yeah, they're newer char- they're characters that weren't in the game already. Um, they're nothing spectacular, though. They don't have very good abilities, so I just I deleted them. <laughs> I got a five star. I got another. I got a. I got a couple. I've gotten a lot of five stars, but not the ones I want. I want a Takumi, uh, or or a Camellia, or um, uh, Hector. Those are like their top tier characters, especially Takumi. If I just get him as a five star, I will be because well, there's be apparently there's happy. five star, and then there's like five star S's. Mm, no. Is that no or no? Did the just, guy at work just, was he just sort of there's just using five stars and the there's a tier list of what people are rating these characters right. and there's three characters that are considered there. Takumi is one of them. He's considered right. S class because he's just the best. He's hands down the best archer okay, because he has gotcha. an ability where he can counter. He can counter uh, at close range. So when an enemy comes in to attack him, he counters, and he's very powerful. So attacking right. him, so, you know, most archers' weaknesses is when you attack them close range with one of your melee guys, um, they're done. Especially they're, if they're in a corner, they, they can't do anything well, they, about it. They can't attack one space, so they just take the damage with no repercussion to the attacker. Yeah. So his ability makes him ridiculously powerful. Um, that would be helpful. That's for sure. So, yeah. Anyway, I got on this stupid train of re-rolling, and until I get oh, him, boy. I figure, uh, yeah. What chapter were you at when you like started re- when you re-rolled? I'm curious. The end of chapter six. Really? Yeah, I was pretty far. <laughs> okay. Because yeah, there's only nine chapters. But so. like I said, I got into a wall where my team was not very effective. I didn't. Uh, okay. I didn't have a good. Uh, I don't have any. I only have the green uh, chick from the start. And oh. Yeah, I just don't have good... Uh, 
ax ax people. Yeah. So anyway, I don't know. Yeah, that that is definitely one thing about that game where you definitely need the proper. You need to be aware of the team that you're fighting, and you need to make sure that you build or have one of your teams set up to attack that one properly. Super otherwise, grindy. Yeah, otherwise it can get real gross fast. So, there you go. That's been your Fire Emblem <laughs> Heroes moment. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess we can get into the news. So, we've got a lot of Activision news here. And mm-hmm. specifically, Activision had um, their, their earnings, earnings call. call. So, a lot of news uh, that we're about to talk about came out of that. Um, I guess right out of the right off the top, uh, man, that was a terrible pull. Uh, <laughs> right off the top, they said that they are not going to be releasing a new Skylanders game this year. <laughs> I, I don't think that was the. I don't think wife. that was the first thing they said. But <laughs> oh, I have not told my wife yet. She's going to be pretty disappointed. <laughs> um, they um had great financials they surpassed their targets um that they made more money than they ever have <laughs> ever as a company that being said um they're gonna fire a bunch of people that being said call of duty infinite which probably has one of the best call of duty campaigns in a while uh was disappointing it was a disappointment it was a disappointment in their eyes uh they had a bunch of layoffs and uh yeah, I said it didn't resonate with fans, <laughs> which is even though it was the number one selling it was the game biggest of the year. I don't understand that. So is that is there something we're missing? Like no one's really mentioned it. It was the best selling game of the year, but then yep. it was a disappointment for Activision because here's the thing: is it just because their target, their internal yeah, targets were higher? It's because they look at they look at the previous games and they go. Okay, this game good's not good enough. Last year sold 850 million or a billion dollars worth, and this game only sold 650 million dollars worth or 700,000. Yeah. Man, 700 God million forbid they worth. made money. It's a failure. Yeah, so now they look at that and they go, "Wow, we're down 30% year on year, so this clearly was a failure and and fans don't like it." Um, which probably has more to do with the fact that they've been pumping out a yearly yeah, Call of Duty just, game for the kinda, past 10 they've years. They've kind of been going down. Even the last one, even though this one's down from the last one, the one before that was down f- before the one the one before that. Yeah, I mean, it's, I think that they just doing a yearly cycle. So, I, unfortunately, you're gonna Infinity, wear people out. Infinity Ward was hit by um, layoffs. Uh, B-Nox and other internal uh, studios as well, which is... That's got to be infuriating if you work there when they surpass their earnings and they still lay people off. That fucking dis- you got to also look at. Bullshit. You got to also look at this though too, and the fact is, is that doesn't Activision is co. They own Blizzard. Yeah. It's Blizzard Activision, so all their and the reality can of it is, and they probably still do okay. The Blizzard side of their business did extremely well. And that is ultimately why Activision made money last year. I mean, yeah. I, I, I shouldn't say made money last year because they made money regardless, but that's the reason why they made more money than they ever have ever is because Overwatch and Blizzard, and they're still rolling in the freaking World of Warcraft money. And they also released the Diablo stuff last year. So I guarantee you a shitload of people went out and bought the expansion for Diablo because they wanted to play the original Diablo dungeons in Diablo 3. Um, People are spending money on loot boxes in Overwatch because they're idiots. (laughs) And that all just means, you know, they Blizzard was also smart about releasing overwatch on pc for 40 bucks and also releasing multiple versions above that um because you get people in early and then you grind them in the loot boxes um and it yeah they they were very smart blizzard made some smart ass moves and they made some great ass games last year and that's a huge reason why they made more money than ever 
So it wouldn't surprise like the layoffs while looking at it as a whole don't make any sense at all. I'm sure that when you looked at, I'm sure infinity ward or whatever, and they probably looked at it internally and said, okay, the last game you made did this. And now you're down 40% based on this game. And now your team is way bigger than it probably needs to be. Um, I still think it's a dick move whenever a company who's just announced that they made more money than they ever have is going to lay off a whole bunch of people because that that doesn't make any fucking sense. I just feel like that's fucking gross. Um, I I agree. I don't, don't get me wrong, but I also feel like those layoffs don't even put a freaking dent in their financials. Nope. So it's just not even pointless. It's like 0.5% or whatever. I guess at least they did it after Christmas, but thanks assholes. Yeah. Um, one of the other big things that came out of this is that Destiny 2 is still coming this year. That is until Kotaku delays it. I'm. <laughs> <laughs> That's the big joke, eh? Kotaku delays every game when they release rumor stories about game delays. Oh, really? Yeah, people That's blame them funny. for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. If if this is coming in the fall, it's pretty dope. Which would to me make the most sense. Um, we'll find out. I'm kind of surprised it's also that they to PC haven't. Too. If that's the case, there's no questions. Hands down, I will buy this on PC. Um, but I guess what I'm wondering is, it seems strange to me that you would be releasing Destiny 2, which is the sequel to one of the best new IPs that you've had in a very long time. And, I mean, this is Activision we're talking about. They haven't announced, they haven't shown off anything about this game. So if this game's coming in the fall, E3 happens in June, that only gives them like a few months to try and get the word out. I don't know, that seems... Like an, uh, I don't know. It just seems like their marketing should be almost ramping up now. I feel like they should have almost had like a release party of some sort, an announcement party of some sort, where they just said, "Hey, this is Destiny Two. This is all the cool crap that we're doing. This is how much better it looks. It's also coming out on this. It's also coming out on that." Because, like, let's be honest, Destiny One, they don't, they're not releasing any more content for that. No, so it's not done. like they have to wait. Like, okay, well, we we don't want to announce Destiny Two yet because we have this other expansion coming out for Destiny One. No, we're done. Like, that's all the content we're getting for Destiny One now. Now it's it's just Destiny Two, uh, and I'm I don't know if it's coming out this fall. The fact that they haven't even announced it yet seems. A bit strange to me. Um, it's, I don't know. it's the new thing. It's like Fallout. Here it is at E3, and here it is in the fall. We, yeah, we don't need I mean, it. We don't need case, a two-year hype, 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 hype cycle to let a game spin out of control on the hype train and then just ain't, like disappoint. No, I. And I'm I'm, really to be I'm, honest, if I'm that's wondering. the way that they talk about, if that's the way that this is going to go, then I'm all for it. Oh, because absolutely. I think that. You know, I some, hope some publishers, I mean, I think Ubisoft's probably one of the worst for this, actually. They seem to re- release stuff super early. They've tightened up over the last year. Yeah, I think you're I right. I think after Watch Dogs um, and how long that took, the original Watch Dogs, yeah. they, I think they learned a lesson and they really tightened up their their window. I think Watch Dogs also got pushed pretty hard, so I, I think, think it probably would have been I don't know. better. Promoting a game way too early just seems like a huge disservice. Because then it really gets the freaking fans like going crazy, and then their expectations like are out of this world. And then I think you just set it up for like to be a disappointment. It's like when somebody says, tells you that this new movie is the best thing you've ever seen, and then you watch it, and it's just been overhyped yeah. so hard that it can't ever really live up to that expectation. Yeah. Speaking of um, that, I watched the arrival. We watched the arrival. Me and the wife. Yeah, and that movie absolutely—that was for me. Oh, right. I heard so much positive praise about that movie, and then like I saw it, and I'm like, it was good, but it was fine. It wasn't this like life changing thing that everyone really. I was expecting like Interstellar kind of like come out of it, like oh my god, my brain is like, right? You know, 
I don't even know where to start and like, let's talk about this <laughs> and like outer space and all this crazy, you know, different dimensions and bullshit. And right. That was not the case. No, it was just like, okay, that was interesting. There was, that was no point. Huh? Fair enough. Um, um, anyway, um yeah, destiny two. I'm excited. I imagine they're talking. If it comes out on PC, man. The, uh, the only thing that will make this difficult is if they're going to be, oh yeah, for all the players that have a Destiny 1 save, we're going to be whatever. I don't know. That's going to really that's suck. The thing. That's what I don't know. They were talking about the stuff not coming forward, and I, I don't know how they're going to handle that. And they're also talking about this game being more easier for to introduce more people to it is a big thing, to make it more friendly gamer friendly so more because destiny has a pretty big uh learning curve like the different ways to grind loot and all the different uh, activities that you can do for to be honest i think their big problem is they had too many different kinds of uh currency more or less they fixed you had you know, currency fi- and then you had light and then you they, had th- this at, other at the thing start, absolutely but now it is a lot more streamlined but it's still you still need someone to explain it to you if you don't can't figure it out on your own. It's not like well, that's what I mean. Like, oh, you got to grind these weapons or these th- things, and then those will turn into this, which then you can use to buy this or make that. Um, like, I understand what they were kind of going with with that whole MMO feel, but yeah, yeah it's, I don't it's know. definitely not that bad anymore. It's a, but it's a bit out of control. Though, it's still. definitely those kinds of systems did turn people off for sure in the early game. Um, when it first came out, the earlier versions, they, they've tightened up a lot of that stuff, but I I find even for myself, like I, I look at, you know, people running around with cool shit and I'm like, oh yeah, that looks neat. I want to, yeah, you got to, and then I look at either what I need to do this or I need to do that. You got to do the raid. Good luck. And you're casual. It's like, oh fuck. Like I'm never going to, and then, then I just don't even care anymore. I'm like, I don't give a shit. Yeah. Fine. Whatever. So they're talking about the game being a total overhaul. And not to expect to bring your gear with you, but then that's what I feel like. All the people that oh. are putting hot, like I've put in. Hold on a second, I can tell you <sighs> a lot of hours. What's the what is the website? Time wasted <laughs> on Destiny or in Destiny? Yeah, uh, I think it's on Destiny, and it you punch in your name. Here we go. Time wasted on Destiny. <laughs> And but the thing is, like, like I'm saying though, it's freaking mouse is going crazy. It's not even so much the that I think they can bring bring weapons and stuff forward. What I'm wondering is, holy even shit! If, yeah, you have a lot of hours. No, I'm looking at the number one guy. Oh, jeez, ten thousand hours. Wow, almost eleven thousand hours. G Money eight seventy six on PlayStation. Jeez. Honestly, you, that you spent ten thousand hours on anything. You're a professional at that. <laughs> oh, maybe he maybe he plays professional Destiny multiplayer for a living. Um, uh, I've spent. I don't think this counts like times when you're away. It accounts for like when you're actually playing, right? Uh, 636 hours. What? I don't think I've played... I've No, I know absolutely for a fact that I have played... I have not played uh, any game as much as Destiny. Really? I'm in the, you didn't even play World of Warcraft more than Destiny? Uh, I don't think I can get that information. I don't know. That actually might be... I don't think so. No. Wow. I'm in the top 49% of Destiny players. Wow, dude. That's... Yeah, I've got like 60 hours played or something, I think. What's I your know. gamer tag? Uh, Angel Few. Is it spelt weird or anything? Uh, it's with a J. But there's no spaces or underscores or anything? I don't think so. Uh, player not found. Yeah. There might be an underscore in there, then. Oh, shit. God damn it. I had a typo in there. Sorry, people. This makes for very entertaining radio, but we have to, oh, yeah. we have to see. 
Mm, 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 mm. It's taking lo- like taking hours. longer than the last few times. <laughs> You're pretty freaking good. Forty eight hours. There you go. One active character. Yeah. See, I have three characters. So yeah, I only I only played a Titan, and I I felt like I still had stuff to do with the Titan, so I didn't want to start another character till I maxed that one out. I'm pretty excited for. Um, for Destiny 2. It is disappointing that you're not going to be able to take your shit with you because that was a I, lot. To me, that makes sense. <laughs> There's the a lot that... of time wasted is just evidenced uh, yeah. to get all that yeah. really cool gear that I got. But my, my thing was is if they allowed, say, for example, in the new game in Destiny 2, for um, if you had a Destiny 1 save on your account i guess they could make it account based and in that case i'd be fine because then i could play it on pc I and imagine I if care. there's anything carried over it might be like um some of the color schemes or uh, the cosmetic stuff or maybe even like a currency boost to just give you a head start but yeah if it's a, yeah, if it's was, a new engine and something new, like that if it's a new engine and new systems it might be very challenging to bring over some of those weapons well, they've already said none of that's going to come over. Yeah. I remember the the Bungie flat out said it will be a new start for everybody. But I was just meaning if there was going to be some sort of bonus, like, hey, you get some of this cool shit because you put all these hours yeah, into Destiny 1. Yeah, there's got to be some kind of reward for long-time gamers. That's yeah, new. that's all I was meaning. Right? Yeah. Um, but if it's account-based, then I'm sure I can probably just log into my Bungie account and it'll be attached to yeah. that. And I could play it on PC. And then I'll be because like, if this game's coming out on PC, there's no way in hell I'm buying it on my PC. And then they're going to be like, you didn't, you needed to play 10 times more than what you did to get a reward. Sorry, you suck. Probably. <laughs> and I'll be like, I don't care. I, I dropped <laughs> I know, two kidding. days on Destiny. I'm just kidding. I, uh, I got other games to play. Yeah, that's crazy how much I played that. Oh my God. I haven't played but it. But honestly, I honestly if that game it. was on PC, I would have played way more. I actually, you know what? If it's on PC, it make, on PC makes me pretty excited because then, like, my brother in law will get into it, and some of my other friends will get into it that are PC players that I play a lot with. And, um, ah, that game is so good when you're playing with other people. That's the thing. It's such a good game. Bad game. Good ge- Bad game. It's the best <sighs> bad game. The best worst <laughs> game. The best shittiest game. It's like Stockholm yeah. Syndrome. Yeah, they got you hard. I can't Ugh. believe you looked at 600 hours in Destiny, man. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Wow. <laughs> Zelda Breath of the Wild is getting uh, a season pass for $20. There's two DLC packs. Um, they don't sound very exciting. It's uh, a this... hard mode, c- Cave of Trials wow. uh, are in the first DLC pack, which are essentially like things that should just be in the game maybe i really like, feel like you're right like unlocks after you beat the campaign uh and then the other um the second one will add a new dungeon new story which that is decent content it's, we don't know what that's going to look like but that's what i would expect from a dlc uh hard mode in cave of trials uh, that's nintendo that's not really cool i feel and, like this is <laughs> nintendo's horse armor and you can get uh, <laughs> the next one. Yeah, you can get a T-shirt for Link with a Switch logo on it. That's definitely your horse armor. Yeah. Anyway, so March third, twenty bucks. When that content drops, it does that was, not. This is the sound of me never purchasing that. It does not do say. Shit. But hey, man, I got a Master Edition pre-ordered. So what's another twenty bucks? <laughs> Jeez. In two weeks, oh, my butts. Wow. In two weeks, my butts are already going to be hurting. So, what's another twenty bucks? Oh man, I guess um, the da- extra. Speaking done, of extra- the Nintendo Switch, I happened to talk to a friend of mine on the weekend who happened to be down at Pack South. Oh who yeah, got hands on with the Switch. Freaking Mike, and his first impressions were <laughs> that thing's real bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he didn't like it. Not at all. He said the con- uh, the controllers felt terrible. The buttons are way too small. Uh, he said the screen is really nice, though. He said the screen on it is great. 
um he just he said like the whole thing uh the controllers and stuff do not feel good they're not comfortable he was very unhappy uh with the way they felt but did, uh, I he, don't he, did not, he, he did not he did not play controller. zelda though he did not play zelda he played I'm trying to remember what he played. I think he played one two switch. I'm not sure all the stuff that he played. He did not play Zelda though. He did say that. Um, he was just talking about the Switch console in general. He was just very unimpressed. He, I mean, and, and it's but he's yeah, not a he, very big gamer though, is he? <laughs> we always bug Mike that he doesn't game anymore like he was he was gamer. but not so much well the me. thing is is like he he loves nintendo like he's a huge he was a huge super nintendo fan he had a 64 mm. um you know and then yeah they kind of yeah i i could see the things. tablet I mean, mode of the switch not being super comfortable the the wii u is not yeah. very comfortable the wii u game no it's not your hands yep. hurt after a while you play yeah. Vita, your hands hurt after a while. You play 3DS, your hands hurt after a while. Because you're just playing on a brick. They're not ergonomical. They don't have the curves yeah. and the handles. He, like. he said the, the, the thing that you put the controllers in, that felt like they were too close together. And he said and then when you're trying to play it on the tablet, they felt too far apart, like on the Wii U. Mm. When you're tr- using the game pad. Yeah, no one's using that of, charge grip, let's be honest. Um, it's pro controller so yes. bust. So, anyways, so that was his initial thoughts on the switch. So, no, oh, that sucks. I know that's kind of what I said. I I told him to shut up because I had one on. Premier, yeah, but shut up, Mike. We don't <laughs> trust you. You're not a Nintendo fanboy. You can't talk bad about Nintendo. Die in a fire. I mean, don't die in a fire. I'm just kidding. No, don't. That keep making cool content on Wabam, please. Yeah, but he said the screen was nice. He did say the screen was nice. He said it was a beautiful screen. So the screen he said it was nice your, and vibrant. Your pro um, controller and slop it in your dock. Like, let's yeah. be honest. When it's so. in tablet mode, you're not going to be playing it for 10 hours. Mm, no. You're going to maybe have your lunch break, a couple other breaks, and play it. But his his point was uh, the, contr- like the Joy-Cons. Yeah, when they're removed. He said I, were terrible. I haven't heard... A lot of positive about the removed Joy Cons. They're kind of wonky and feel strange. He just meant like in general, yeah. the Joy Cons suck. Like he just said, they, the buttons on them are feel too small. The analog sticks feel a little off. Like he just said, like they that part of it just felt bad. Um, he didn't try the Pro Controller. Mm-hmm. He said so. Hopefully that's better. Um, I mean, time will tell. We'll see. But yeah. That was kind of his first impression. People I trust more have not had such negative responses, so. That is fair. He is entitled to his opinion. Yep. Um, Pokemon Go update is finally going to add 80 new monsters. Yeah, apparently this is dropping later this week. Yeah, this game gets has made a lot of we talked about it making a billion dollars right already yeah it, it made a shitload of money and it's such because it's, it's still releasing in places around the world it's such a bad like it's, it's such a bad sh- game it's so stupid. it just it just dropped in south korea this week i, I mean why. so <laughs> like um uh. but the thing is ugh, this frustrates me really really bad because i have it installed still on my phone I open it from time to time. I I open it from time to time just because. I played it at Christmas Um, to get my Pikachu with the Christmas hat. That's it. Yeah. Um, I get super frustrated because I keep hoping that they're going to fix the Pokemon tracker part. Nah. That game was at its best when the Pokemon tracker shit worked. Yeah, that worked for like like, that worked for like a couple weeks when I happened to be at Disneyland and was really cool. Yeah, and then they turned it off. And <laughs> now, I feel like the problem is, is now they're just. I feel like they've just forgotten about that, or, or they're hoping we've all forgotten about that at this point, and they're just like, "Yeah, fuck it, we're not going to bother fixing that now. We're just going to start releasing more content that we can charge people for, and we'll make more another billion dollars." It sounds like give a, a fuck. freaking mobile game, nickel and dime you to death. I mean, yeah, I just wish they would actually fix the bloody game. It just frustrates me to no end. Considering like, they've you're... made more money than, like, most games in the last year. 
<laughs> single games. They kind of don't really have an excuse to hire the team or the get the server resources or get the development resources to fix gyms, fix battles, implement trading. No, because apparently, fix, clearly, people are fix, still playing it and fi- giving them money. Fix, I want to meet these idiots. Fix, but fix GPS tracking. That's a sad thing. Like they've made so much money, so what's their excuse for not fixing any of this stuff? I just want them to fix GPS tracking. I, like I want to be able to run around and actually find Pokemon yeah. instead of just wandering That's around aimlessly hoping something pops up. You got to go back, um, and I'm pretty sure the trailer's still on YouTube. Like yes, the, it the is. The launch announcement trailer for Pokemon Go shows what they envisioned for tracking, and that looked really cool. That looked awesome. You're like following and it shows how far the Pokemon is and you'd like follow it on your screen. Like that looked so cool. And even the near thing was a better th- idea, a better thing than we have now. Now it's like, oh, there may be a Pokemon close to this <laughs> stop or something like that. And it's like, <sighs> this is stupid. Okay. And all this. Oh, Let's stop talking rah. about Pokemon Go. Rah. It is. <laughs> I don't know why yeah. I put that in there, but. Obviously, people people are still playing it. So clearly, uh, the this is probably the big story uh, of the week. Um, Disney is severing ties to PewDiePie after a bunch of anti-Semitic. Is that Semitic? Sem- that's how you say it, right? Anti-Semite, yeah. Semitic, Semitic videos um, that he released. Uh, I guess about a month ago now. Um, well, he released the videos throughout, like a they were they were a, out a, a bunch over a of bit, escalating right? stuff. He's just been including yeah. uh, Nazi references. Uh, the big thing that pushed it over the top was um, actually before we even get to this, I've been I I watch PewDiePie. Um, uh, PewDiePie is associated with Maker Studios. Which is a, a was. is a M is a MCN is that what they call it? He was associated a multi with Maker content network, or it's where a lot of if you're a big YouTuber, you get the, you get invited to join these networks where they uh, give you different rates for your views, and you get all kinds of benefits by you know ad and uh, so forth endorsements, blah 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 blah, blah whatever, right? And Disney bought Maker Yeah, Studios. Disney bought Maker, so that's how Disney is in the mix for this. So, anyway. Yeah. PewDiePie, 53 million YouTube subscribers. Biggest YouTube star, easily, hands down. Started with Let's, yep. started with Let's Plays. Uh, he's 26 years old. Apparently, he made like $15 million, $15 million last million. year. Um, depending on what your humor is like uh you either you may find him funny or you may find him to be a fucking idiot uh my wife thinks he's a fucking idiot she doesn't understand how i can watch him for me i have the humor of a 13 year old little boy so i kind of think he's funny right so i have been entertained by his videos i have laughed and i think his weird twisted humor for whatever reason i kind of like it so i i th- I think he's okay. I could understand why people hate him and don't like his videos because you literally have to be a child or a man baby to like it if you aren't already a 13-year-old boy who's one of his 53 million fans. Um, (laughs) The thing I've noticed with him lately, though, it kind of seems lately that he's been struggling with content. His personality has changed a lot lately. He always feels like he's on the defensive and... It's very weird. Like, it almost kind of seems like he's kind of... I feel like in the videos he's been making, like, he's kind of, like, he's falling victim to his fame and having a lot of that, like, identity crisis stuff. Like, it's just been weird shit he's been doing. So, that kind of plays into this. So, I guess, you know, he's been very troll baity with a lot of his videos click baity doing ridiculous stuff that you know lots of youtubers do to get views and get the headlines and so basically he made a video um where he like some more context the story is that he made a video with anti-semitic stuff where he had some indian guys shirtless hold up a sign saying death the old juice that's the short story clickbait headline I f- the, yeah. the full story is is that he 
f- figured he was going to screw around with Fiverr, which is a service on the internet where you could basically pay someone five bucks to do anything. So he just thought he'd see how far it would go and if anyone would be willing to do it. And of course, these couple dudes in India who five bucks is a lot of money for them. Um, not having any idea what that sign meant or what they were doing, made a video for five bucks saying right. death to all Jews. And it was a joke in his opinion, whether you find that to be a disface, distasteful joke or not is, you know, that's the question. That's where, you know, Disney and them are like, you know what? That's, yep. That's enough. You, your fans are all young. This is not necessarily really cool messaging that we want to be associated with at all, regardless of it being a joke or not. He's had the Hitler imagery in other videos. He's had, you know, the high he, Hitler stuff. To be fair, stuff. he all. definitely seems to be... He's going for shock value, oh, and I get that. Absolutely. But I also think that, in, in my opinion, I think that there's... You know, I and I mean, obviously, anybody can argue anything. Oh, people are way too sensitive about shit these days. And that's blah, his blah, defense, blah, blah, blah. right? He's like saying, "Oh, everyone's like once, you know, want to quiet me and they're against me because you know we all have to be PC and all this stuff." And he's like, "You know, it's just a joke. It's shock value." And then, but then it's like, "Well, yes and no." Yeah, that's kind of where I look at it, and it's like I think that. Yes, on one hand, he's not wrong, but on the other hand, the fact that this keeps happening and the fact that he seems to keep going back to this kind of makes me worried a little bit. Like, is this something that you do think deep down? And I, the other thing that I think that he needs to remember is that this is going out to, to possibly 53 million people no matter what you think whether or not you're pushing a message that you believe people are going to latch on to it and unfortunately as we've already seen there's very uh anti-semitic websites and places and people that are they have latched onto this hard now he's getting a lot of publicity in a lot of more or less the wrong places that I'm sure he doesn't want it from. Well, at least I hope he doesn't want it from. Um, and I, I just, I think that when you have the ear and the, the eyes of 53 million people, you need to be a little bit more aware of what your message is doing and what you're promoting. And no matter what, I think that, you are saying something even when you're it's like it's like when you have a friend or when you have a person not even necessarily a friend that comes up to you and they say something really hurtful but then they're like oh dude i'm just joking with you ha 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 and this is a little bit like that this is that thing where it's like I feel like he's throwing it out there f- hoping for shock value hoping to get more views And then when it goes totally sideways and he realizes that this is totally blowing up in his face because now suddenly the media is looking at it and other places that are not game related and, you know, mainstream and they're going, whoa, what the fuck is going on over here? You got a guy with 53 million view like viewers and this is the type of stuff that he's promoting. Hold on a second. Maybe we need to rethink what's going on over here. And now he's suddenly backpedaling, going, going like, whoa, whoa, guys, whoa, this was a joke. Ha ha ha. And it's like, I don't really know how you slice it. I just, I feel like there's certain things that are hard to joke about. And the fact that it's a very touchy you know, subject, that's for sure. Um, and, and, and a lot and of I comedians make jokes about that stuff and they get away with it fine because obviously they don't have as much influence as he does or a platform like he does. So there's probably a lot of entertainers and comedians that have said even worse shit along these lines. And he didn't say anything. No. He paid a couple guys five bucks to hold a sign to see how ridiculously far he could get with that stupid service. Uh, and I guess my thing is, is like, you could have chose a lot of other things. Yeah, it's true. It's I feel like of, you could it's definitely a bad judgment have... judgment call, because clearly he's... 
he's not he's not racist. Like people have come out that know him, uh, well known other people that have worked with him, and they're like, this guy is far from that. He's contributed to lots of charities. He's done a lot of good stuff, and you know, to judge him on one mistake is kind of unfair. Um, it, it, what worries me about this though def- is that a year ago or so, he he a, a similar issue occurred where he did a very similar thing where. He had ended up in hot water for, again, another anti-Semitic video that he had made. Um, the difference that time, though, was that after everybody kind of came out and said, whoa, dude, like, this is kind of unacceptable. What are you thinking? Even he came out and apologized. Yeah. He said, like, look, you know what? This is not what I'm about. This is not what I want he hasn't made people to think I'm about. Has he? I don't think he's posted anything for a couple of days. This this time, he essentially got mad at the media, and he did a bit of a hissy fit. He he came out and he on his Tumblr he wrote a big post about how the media is more or less ganging up on him. He pulled a Donald Trump, to be honest mm-hmm. with you. He he totally pulled a Donald Trump, and it's boo hoo hoo. It's all about me, and the media is making me out like this bad guy, and blah 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 blah. Um. And, and I don't know, to be honest, I read that and he's like, you know, I, I'm going to make the videos that I want to make because I think they're funny. And if people can't handle that or they don't understand, then they don't have to watch my videos. Um, and like, yeah, I guess to be fair, like, sure. I, yes, that is a thing that is, you're not wrong. Um, but at the same time, when you have one of the biggest white power, online magazines websites that is now pushing you as an anti-semite what does that tell you about the message that you're pushing i don't know like to be honest that would kind of make me go like hold on a second like this may have started off as a joke but i feel like maybe i took it too far now and maybe this is going down a path that i don't want it to go down which kind of seemed like that's kind of what happened last year when he did his apologizing video and this time around though he's kind of acting like the spoiled brat who i want to do what i want to do because i want to do it and i don't give a shit what the repercussions of it are and now i'm mad because people don't like what i'm doing and there are actually repercussions and i'm sure that his deal with maker and now there's been some other fallout from this as well where other people are pulling away from him like google for example has removed him from the promoted um sponsorship video slot which means that before when you're surfing the internet him and his sponsored videos and things like that would show up quite heavily. Um, whereas now that's been removed. Uh, YouTube has now pulled him from YouTube red as well, where he had a channel on YouTube red, which is the paid yeah, subscription they canceled his, side his show scare PewDiePie that they were going to do a second season of. Yeah. So now they've canceled that. So t- I think that, you know, looking at this, uh, to be totally honest with you, Ben Kuchara over on Polygon actually wrote a really good article about this precise thing um, that I read today that actually I, I think he pretty much nails it. Um, I would really recommend you go check it out if this is something that you're even remotely interested in. Because I think he puts it into a really good perspective where PewDiePie is complaining about the media supposedly ganging up on him but i think that he's the reality of it yeah is, is he's that, not having the right reaction that's for sure um I, yeah i don't think like i said I don't, I don't think he's racist from i'm, the, I'm not saying that I've, he watched, is I've watched a lot of his content i think he made a pretty stupid mistake i think it's something he's been struggling with with coming up with content lately and his identity so i think there's a couple other issues going on he's clearly going to pay for it financially oh yeah he's you know already what? he's that's the thing that's happening he's gonna be fine like he's still gonna be well, getting his ad revenue like he's that's not gonna yep. go away he might lose some endorsements but i'm i'm pretty sure pewdiepie is gonna be okay and if anything if he was smart i imagine a proper apology video coming out soon and i'm gonna guess that he's probably gonna be a little more careful with his future content 
it that see and that's exactly where if you read what he's already wrote that's exactly what he said he's not going to do. Well, he already delete he deleted that, right? Did he? Cuz he flat out said during that that, you know, this is He had a, who he I had a video. I make... He had a video that deleted, but I don't know. I yeah, I haven't yeah. watched. He did post something a day ago about who do they hate and it looks like a picture of him, but I haven't seen that video. Pretty pretty yeah, bad. I, I don't know. This just distasteful jokes. Like he would have been better off just talking about shit and crap and toilet humor and just the, I don't know not I Nazi just, I don't know. Nazi jokes and Jew jokes are just a little too sensitive they're a little too on the nose I, I, feel I understand like, yeah, freedom I, I understand right now. freedom of speech and all but it's just that's like one of those things like yeah there's you know, freedom of speech but there's also that doesn't mean that there's not going to be repercussions from yeah, your and there's kind of like a respect thing like, do you really need to make a joke that, that was a pretty serious thing in history that it's not really funny in any context you know uh, especially with everything that's like, happening right is now like, in is the like world nine eleven joke funny like it could be funny but why make a joke about something else yeah, and I think that by marginalizing certain things, by making jokes out of them, I actually think you marginalize them and make them, I don't know, like that's the thing where I have a hard time with it, where I think that sometimes these things get, jokes get made of them as a almost a way for people to hate on it and try it and have it be funny. People do the same. Th- I mean, we we get into a whole conversation here, but I mean, people do it, this with certain other things that I really dislike, and it it's a way for them to, you know, be the way that they are and kind of, you know, hope that by making a joke about it, oh ha ha ha, I'm a racist prick, but I can make a joke about it and people will laugh because it's a joke, but they don't really realize, you know what I mean? And I I think that it's stuff like that that it's yes. if more people kind of stopped in their tracks and went like wait a minute no dude that's not funny that's not cool <laughs> yeah, that's not cool ah. Th- i think that that would be better off and i feel like a person in his position that's where he needs to be instead of where he is instead of having people getting mad at you know getting mad at people because they're holding him to a, yeah. a certain standard yeah. well of course we're going to do that if, you have 53 million ears i bet you if he doesn't come out with an apology he's going to he's going to obviously tread lightly on this topic or and or hope. if he doesn't he's going to go freaking whole hog and he's going to do something really effing ridiculous to really really stir the pot He's only yeah. got two directions to go. One is he's going to be like, kind of that goes in line with his little, you know, get upset Donald Trump reaction and go on the yeah. defensive and everyone's attacking him. He's either going to go freaking right overboard as a big F you to everybody. If he does that, then that's going to be very, that's going to be super self destructive. But if, hey, if it makes him feel good, he made a few million dollars. He's going to be fine. He could stop doing YouTube. He'll be fine. He's made tens of millions over the last four or five years. So I'm pretty sure he's okay. Ultimately, it makes no difference to me. I don't think that, like, from where I stand, and I know that this is whatever, I don't feel that he does almost anything good to the gaming community. And if he was to go away tomorrow, I wouldn't notice. So... Yeah, he's not involved. In I'm neither here nor there. He's, I don't he's, ever he's, watch his videos. He, he grew but... up on he he grew up on the scene on Let's Plays, but he's so far from that now. Um, yeah, he does do he's, he does a he's shit swung into the media, does, right? Like into the into the mainstream load of charity. Like he's donated millions of dollars. So like, regardless of what anyone thinks about him, he's done more than most of us all added together. Good. St. Jude's and, uh, and the World Wildlife Federation. He's donated a lot of money and he's been part of a lot of campaigns and and you do. Like obviously yeah. when you make that much money that's something that's a little easier for you to do. Um It's called a tax write off. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not I'm not trying to mitigate that. Yeah, but that. you don't just but saying, you don't like, have to you know, do that. You don't need no. the tax write. When you make 15 million dollars, you don't need a tax write off cuz you can afford to pay the tax. Or you do that because you don't want to pay the tax. Yeah, but 
Yeah, I don't know. Either um, way. Yeah, like, like I said, I mean, ultimately, I'm I'm not really here nor there. I don't watch him. So for me... So he's like, not like untouchable. If, if anything he's going to learn, he's not untouchable. I'm yeah. pretty sure PewDiePie is going to be okay. There you go. I don't think it's very funny. I did not. But I have thought lots of his other videos are funny. I don't think I've watched a single one of his videos all the way through. Yeah, it takes a special breed of brain damage to enjoy them. I've seen bits and pieces <laughs> of his videos here and there. but <laughs> uh, I was going to talk about my PS4 Pro, but we're running a little long. And uh, I think we've got a show. Um, I, damn it, I'm kind of curious about that damn thing. I got a new one. I don't. I was right, wasn't I? It was your PS4 Pro. I don't know. I haven't played. You got a bad one. I haven't played with it enough to know. Oh! It seems like it's better. Okay, but I better, but not I'd, fixed. I haven't played any PS4 games long enough to know. All right. So I honestly. Okay, we'll hold off till next week then. I'm not holding my breath. I'm. Mm, yeah, we'll see. All right. But my Fair Xbox enough. plays just fine, and my Netflix plays just fine, so I know it's the PS4 Pro. All right. That's the one thing. That makes sense. Um, you can follow me on Twitter, at Rick F, no K, R-I-C-F. You can always come bother me on Twitter, at Dane Cody, at D-A-Y-N-E-C-O-D-Y. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter at Geekaholics at all those above sources. Uh, and if you have a chance, rate us on iTunes, share us with your friends. And like always, we appreciate you for being here and lending us your ears for looks like almost two hours now. <laughs> there you go. What's next week? Nothing. Nothing next week. Next week? No. Next week we are doing Game of the oh, Year. Okay. We're, we're yes. writing that in the okay. in the outline right now. Next year, Game of the Year is happening. Game next of the Year week. 2016 in 2017. Yes. We're a little bit late, but I don't care. We gotta get that done. Top five. Exactly. Top five games that we both played for twenty seven for twenty sixteen. In twenty seventeen. No, no. If you beat the game in 2017, it doesn't count. So for you, you can't have Doom. <laughs> Shut up! I can't have Doom. <laughs> I played three quarters of it before the end of 2016. <laughs> All right, fine. It came out last year. It doesn't matter when you beat it. All right. Fair enough. I beat it every day. I mean, what? <laughs> Whoa! TMI. TMI. Until next week. We'll catch you guys later. We're out. Peace.